Okay, so grab your three millimeter hook and we're going to start making our headpiece. So go ahead and grab your solid color, your, um, your brown, whatever kind of brown you want to use for your bear. So you want to start off making the head by chaining two. And then in that very first chain that you did, you want to single crochet six. And I like to work over my chain, I'm sorry, my tail, because then I can use it later to, to pull it kind of like a magic loop and close it up. If you prefer to do a magic loop here, then feel free. Just make sure you get six single crochets in this first stitch. The yarn I grabbed is kind of old. It's fighting with me. So two, four, five, so one more, six. Okay, so you can count backwards. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is the sixth stitch right here. You can pull tight to close that hole now. In round two, it's going to be all increases, which means you want to put two single crochets worked in each stitch around. So at the end of this row, you should have 12 stitches. And I recommend grabbing a stitch marker because you're going to be needing to mark your stitches soon and I'm fighting with this old yarn. Okay, so go ahead and do that and I'll see you at the end of this row. Okay, for round three, we're going to be doing one single crochet in the next stitch and then two single cro crochets in the, in the following stitch. So we'll have one single crochet and then an increase. One single crochet and then an increase. So I'm gonna go ahead and do, and I'm gonna work over this tail of mine still. First stitch, if I can get my hook through it, is going to be a single crochet and I'm going to go ahead and place a different color marker here. And I think I'm going to go ahead and cut this little tail. Sometimes I use these tails as a marker but since I'm uh, doing a tutorial I want to be clear what's a marker and what isn't for you guys. So I did my first single crochet so the very next stitch will be an increase. So I'll put two single crochets in the next. One single crochet in the next stitch and then do an increase by doing two single crochets in the next. Continue this pattern all the way around. When you get back up to your stitch marker you should have 18 stitches. Okay for round four you're going to single crochet one in the next two stitches I'm going to move my marker up here to mark my very first stitch of the row. Once you have those two, then the next one will be an increase. Then you'll repeat that pattern again. One single crochet in the next two stitches and then an increase of two single crochets in the next. And you'll do that a total of six times and at the end of this row you should have 24 stitches. As you can see after your sixth time you can count your stitches. You'll have 24 stitches but you won't quite be up to the end so it's important that you you count how many times that you've done the, the stitch in total. Um, oh actually it's a total of seven times. The, I'm looking at the pattern it says repeat six times. So a total of seven times last row you do two sing, uh, one single crochet in each stitch and then two in the next and then you do that six more times and then you should be right where I am right now with uh, 24 stitches. Now for round five you're going to be putting one single crochet in the next three stitches and then you'll be doing an increase. So one, two, and three. One, two, three. This is my very first stitch here and then I'll do an increase. One and two. Wow, those birds are crazy out there again. Some um, parrots outside on the tree. Okay, so after you do your one single crochet and three stitches and then your increase, you want to repeat that six more times and then after you get done repeating it six more times, you should have 30 stitches. 
Okay, make sure you count your stitches and that you have 30 stitches. Then for row six, you want to put four single crochets in a row. So one single crochet worked in the next four stitches and then you'll do an increase of two single crochets in a row. Don't forget to move your marker and then you want to repeat this six more times and at the end of this row you should have 36 stitches. Okay, at the end of round six you should have 36 stitches. For round seven you want a single crochet in the next five stitches. One, oops, two, three, four, and five. You can move your marker up if you want. And then you'll be doing an increase. So you'll have one single crochet worked in the next five stitches and then do an increase. Don't forget to move your marker. At the end of this row, round seven, sorry, you should have 42 stitches. For round eight, you want to put one single crochet in the next six stitches and then you'll be doing an increase. One, two, three, four, five. I need one more. Six single crochets in a row and then an increase. And you'll want to repeat this six more times. Don't forget to move your marker up if you want and at the end of this row you should have 48 stitches. Okay, for round nine, round nine you want to put one single crochet in the next seven. Three, four, five, six, and seven and then do an increase. So continue to do six, six more times to put seven stitches in a row and then increase. At the end of this row, you should have 54 stitches. Okay, make sure at the end of round nine that you count your stitches and you have 54 stitches. For round 10, you're gonna be putting one single crochet in the next eight stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and then you'll do an increase of two single crochets in the same stitch. Now you want to repeat that six more times, and at the end of row 10, you should have 60 stitches. Okay, I just got done with round 10, and now for rounds 11 through 21, so for the next seven rounds, you just want to put one single crochet worked in all 60 stitches around. So go ahead and do one single crochet in each stitch around for the next seven rows, and I'll see you back here for decreasing on round 22. Okay, so I just finished my seven rows of single crochets, and now I'm on round 22. So when you find the last stitch of your row, you want to find out where your marker is. And then if you're right-handed, you want to go this direction. And then I'll flip it for the left video too. But you want to kind of go diagonally back to count where your last stitch was. For round 22, you want a single crochet in the next eight stitches. And this one I think it's going to be important for me to place my marker here. I get too far away since everything looks the same. <laughs> so you want to put one single crochet in the next eight single crochets and then you're going to want to do a decrease. So let me get these eight and then I'll show you. Two, four, six, seven, maybe seven. This old yarn does not like me. Seven, and eight. And to do a decrease, you want to go in through one stitch, pull up a loop, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, pull through all three loops. Then you want a single crochet for the next eight stitches again. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight and then again using the next two stitches do a single crochet decrease 
and you want to continue this all the way around and when you get to the end of your row you should have 54 stitches okay be sure to count your stitches at the end of round 22 make sure you have 54 stitches for round 23 you want a single crochet in the next seven single crochets three four five six and seven and then you want to do a decrease so again single crochet in the next seven then do a single crochet decrease and at the end of round 23 you should have 48 stitches okay for round 24 you want a single crochet in the next six stitches three four, five, and six, and then you'll do a single crochet decrease. So you want to continue to do six single crochets in a row, and then a single crochet decrease. And at the end of round 24, you should have 42 stitches. Okay, for round 25, you want to put a single crochet worked in the next five stitches. And then you're going to do a double crochet decrease. Again, one single crochet worked in the next five stitches, and then a single crochet decrease. And at the end of round 25, you should have 36 stitches. Okay, for round 26, you want to put one single crochet in the next four stitches. And again, I'm fighting with my yarn. one two three four and then you'll do a single crochet decrease again you want to put a single crochet in your next four stitches and then a single crochet decrease and at the end of round 26 you should have 30 stitches okay when you're done with round 26 and you have 30 stitches then you want to go ahead and stuff your piece move that out of the way you don't want to stuff it too tightly you just want to at least get some stuffing in there because it'll make it easier later on because your piece is getting smaller at the top just get some stuffing in there but don't try to block the stitches if you need to take some out then do so you don't want to block yourself but you want to get some in there so you're not working from nothing okay so for round 27 you want a single crochet one in the next three stitches so put one single crochet and I'm trying to keep my stitches fairly tight here so three in a row and then you'll do your decrease so for round 27 do three single crochets in a row and then do a decrease and at the end of round 27 you should have 24 stitches so for round 28 you want to do one single crochet in the next two stitches and then do a single crochet decrease again work one single crochet in the next two stitches and then a single crochet decrease and at the end of round 28 you should have 18 stitches okay for round 29 we're going to be putting one single crochet in the next stitch and then do a single crochet decrease again put one single crochet in the next stitch and then do a single crochet decrease you're going to do this a total of seven times around and then at the end of the of row 29 you should have 12 stitches okay at the end of round 29 we only have one more round left and it's just going to be decrease 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 seven times all the way around so this is the last time you have to stuff your piece and I recommend stuffing it as much as you can stuff your piece as much as you can until uh, as long 
stuff it as much as you can except not too much where you'll start to see the stuffing in between but you want to stuff this part really good because this is the main part that the the kid probably gonna hug so I like to make sure that this piece is nice and stuffed plus you're going to be adding a mouth plate to this and uh, eyeballs and everything else so making sure that it's really stuffed well will give you I'm trying to make it a little longer just because I'm going to put my mouth plate here and then the eyes will go here and then the ears will go kind of close to where they're so stuff your piece as much as you can this is going to be the base and this part here is going to be the bottom you want the good side to be on the top I messed up and didn't do that for some reason on my bear but I did it on my other one my unicorn okay so find your stitch again I've tried to stuff it inside try to I did stuff it well my loop okay so again you're just going to be decreasing this row you're trying to close your hole up this time my loop my initial loops a little big I'm going to reduce it because you really want to I know it's difficult because you're trying to dodge the stuffing and again try not to get that beginning loop to get too big and it's going to try on you try and try as, as it might it just looks like it's gonna keep doing it to me but that's okay it's not really that big a deal because you're going to leave a little bit of a tail not a little bit but quite a bit of a tail because you're going to have to sew the head on and you can use it to sew this hole completely shut but it's best to close it with crochet the best you can okay I believe I did that seven times now I'm just gonna go either side pull a loop through whoops let's get from the opposite side I'll grab some yarn through slip stitch and then chain one and then leave yourself a decent amount of tail because you're going to need it to sew onto your afghan so I don't think I need to close it any more than that looks pretty good and there you go that's how you do the headpiece and the arms that I made these are I made these arms exactly the same way that I did on my unicorn lovey so I'm gonna go ahead and just share that video since I already did that uh, recording uh, so on the on the video where it says to grab your orange yarn you want to grab your blue yarn or whatever color you're using for your secondary color so use a use a certain color for the top and then when it says to switch to white you'll switch back to your brown for your teddy bear color whatever teddy bear color you're using you're gonna need to make two arms okay to make the arms again we're going to start with chaining three and going to that first chain slip stitch to form a ring and chain one now again we'll be working over our tails and putting six single crochets worked in our ring it's two three four five and six now we're going to single crochet increase in all our six stitches start counting from backwards two four all right two four six so this is my beginning stitch and I'm going to do an increase in each one so we'll have 12 at the end so I'm just going to count that I'm going to put two single crochets in each of my stitches so this will be four five six seven 
eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. For round three, we're going to do a single crochet in the next stitch and then an increase. And we'll have 18 stitches at the end of round three. So we're going to begin by doing a single crochet in the first stitch and then an increase by putting two single crochets in the next. So that was one. That's my second time doing it, which gives me five, six stitches. So make sure I'm in the next stitch out. Yeah. So I've done it twice, got seven stitches. That's eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. I'm supposed to have eighteen. Let me see where I am. I must have miscounted. This should be eighteen. Should put a stitch marker there. Two, four, six, eight, ten. 12, 14, 16, 17, 18. Okay, I have 18 stitches now. Before I make that mistake again, just so I know roughly where the end of my row is, I'm going to put the stitch marker. Okay. So for round four, we're just going to be putting a single crochet in each one of those stitches. So it's easy enough just to count up 18 stitches. So one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Okay, now for round five, we're going to be single crocheting in all 18 stitches. The only difference is we're going to be using those back loops only. So again, we're going to be leaving the front loops and just grabbing up the back loops. So in the next stitch, skip this first, the front stitch, and just put a single crochet in that back stitch only. And you can see we're starting to leave the front loops behind. And we'll be doing this for 18 stitches. So we've done it for, we can count the front loops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. And I believe this is, yep, this is where we change our color. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this color and grab up my next. Okay, since I'm switching colors, I like to finish the very last stitch. I'm going to back out, leaving just my two loops here. There we go. Grab up my new yarn, beat it through my loops, and just so I don't have a loose beginning stitch. I'm going to go ahead and not too tightly, just a couple of knots here. I'll cut my tails a little smaller so I don't have to fight with them here. Can stuff them inside. Okay. So for the next 20 rows, we're going to be doing a single crochet. Hold on, let me see my piece here. Yeah. Okay, for rows 6 through 38, we're just going to be putting one single crochet 
in each stitch around and you have 18 stitches and right now you don't really need the marker because this marks your way but you can place it after maybe your 10th row so that you know that you've, you're halfway there and then you can continue to do the other 10 rows. You want to do a total of 20 rows. Okay, after you get done with round 38, you have your 20 rounds done. You're going to slip stitch. Actually, uh, just leave it, leave it on for a moment. You want to go ahead and stuff your, your leg. Remember, always try to push it all the way down to the very end. Try to stuff it as much as you can. But you're going to be sewing this end. So just make sure that it's stuffed enough but not overstuffed where it's going uh, past your stitches too much. And you're going to do the same thing you did with the ear. Go ahead and go through stitch on one side and then the stitch on the other side. And then slip stitch. Going to be slip stitching Go through the stitch on one side and then the stitch on the other side and slip stitch. Just continue this all the way down. It's going to be easier for me to do this off camera. Okay, when you come to the end of your row, this is where you'll chain one. And then leaving yourself quite a bit of tail, not a lot, but enough to sew on. You don't need a lot, lot. Enough to sew on your arm. So that's it guys. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm not sure how many parts that this is going to be in, but it sure takes me several weeks just to get this project done and then uh, the pattern written out, the pictures edited and everything put on the site. So it takes me quite a bit of time to do it, but I'm going to do just like I did with my Unicorn Lovey and I'm going to make that pattern available to you on my, my shop. You can buy it in full, the PDF pattern. Uh, before all the tutorials are, the pattern tutorials are released on my page. So make sure you check out my uh, Raverly or Etsy shop for that.